Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today as you can see we have a different background and that is because today is a special video. It is in honor of the anniversary of William Holden and today I wanted to review five William Holden movies that you probably haven't seen and you must. If you're new to this channel my name is Miriam and in here as always we aim to discover and discuss a lot more about classic films and I'm really happy to share all my findings, my researches and my opinions about a topic that I absolutely adore. And today again it's pretty special because William Holden is an actor that I absolutely love, that I really admire and that I was hoping to make a video of him someday and today I wanted to change a little bit the dynamics of the five different things that you probably don't know about an actor. In this case my goal was to take a closer look at his body of work because in my opinion he has one of the best filmographies of classic actors. If you think of other stars like my friend Humphrey Bogart or other actors, they're pretty much praised for their impressive number of great films and I think that an actor like William Holden is many times overlooked in that regard and that's what I'm trying to hopefully Good convey morning. with this video is that he had quite an outstanding body of work because if we consider films like the Sunset Peter Boulevard the, the Bridge on the River Quay, Sabrina, Born Yesterday, one of my favorites as you know, um, Network, The Wild Bunch. So for the most part of his career he made really great and timeless movies. There was a time in fact when I challenged myself to watch as many William Holden movies as I could find since I loved many of his performances. I wanted to keep watching more and immediately when I what I realized by doing this is that even minor films that he did are quite good and really worth watching and that led me to believe that his whole filmography was really impressive, that even films that were not big budget movies, that were not major productions, were quite again pretty great movies and very much overlooked and underrated. So that is why I decided in this case to do a video reviewing five films that probably not many people have watched and in this case I wanted to share and recommend films that I'm pretty sure that you must watch and it will really show you that he really deserves to be celebrated as he should and that's what we'll do today with this video. Now about dreamy William Holden. He was an actor that was predominantly known for his films in the 50s. That was the decade that he worked the most and pretty much all his best known roles come from that period. And he worked mostly for Paramount Studios and Columbia Studios and also he would be mostly remembered for his anti-hero cynical roles such as Sunset Boulevard's Joe Gillis even though he played different types of characters as we will see in this video and he would bring to those characters far more complexity than he is most times credited for. I think he was again an impressive actor that he seemed to really understand every character he played. So that's what we'll cover here today. We'll cover five different films that again you probably haven't seen and that you absolutely must, proving that he had an amazing filmography that I hope you discover at some point if you haven't already. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Alright, so the first film that I wanted to talk about today is a film called Executive Suit released in 1954 and this is an MGM melodrama set in the corporate world which is quite unusual I must say and is superbly well acted with an all-star cast that includes Frederick March, Louis Calhoun, Paul Douglas, Shelley Winters, Walter Pidgeon, June Allison, Nina Falk, Dean Jagger and Barbara Stanwyck. This was the second film starring William Holden and Barbara Stanwyck after the successful Golden Boy in 1939 which was 
William Holden's breakthrough role, thanks in so many ways to Barbara Stanwyck because at the time that they were filming Golden Boy, the studio was thinking of replacing the then young actor William Holden and Barbara Stanwyck insisted that if they got rid of Holden, they should also get rid of her and he was eternally grateful and that is something that he expressed publicly in a ceremony in the late 70s where they both presented an Oscar and I will leave a clip here so that you can see the beautiful speech and his beautiful words in appreciation of Barbara Stanwyck's help. Nine years ago this month we were working in a film together called Golden Boy and it wasn't going well because I was going to be replaced but due to this lovely human being and her interest in understanding and her professional integrity and her encouragement and above all her generosity I'm here tonight Oh, yeah. Quite touching, isn't it? They remained friends, as you can imagine, during all their lives, and that is something that is really beautiful. So, coming back to Executive Suit, this is a film that was directed by Robert Wise, who is mostly known for his musicals like The Sound of Music or West Side Story but he is also a filmmaker that did many many films in other genres that you probably don't know that are directed by him and in this case it's one of the examples also of this director's versatility and it's again an excellent excellent melodrama with an impressive script by Ernest Lemon who also wrote West Side Story and The Sound of Music but also created scripts four films like Sweet Smell of Success, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and North by Northwest, to just name a few. So he was a very good writer. And the film starts when the director of the company suddenly dies and there has to be a replacement for him. There has to be someone else assuming his position. And in this instance, William Holden would play the hero of the story. He would play an industrial designer with very solid principles who won't allow the company that he believes in and that he works for to become a degrading place only in favor of stockholders and he's married in the film to June Allison and the whole plot unveils little by little up to the moment when a decision has to be reached. He no, is absolutely didn't. brilliant facing giants of, lot of acting wrong. like Frederick March Grabbing or Paul easy. Douglas who sure work thing. intensively That's in theater or Louis Calhoun or Barbara Stanwyck. My the favorite part of the film is no actually the face. second half sure of it, it where Probably everything happened. leads up to that moment in which there will be a meeting and a voting will take he place so in order to pick out machine. the next director, the next CEO, and it plays out pretty much like a little bit like 12 Angry Men in a way where there's a first general idea that everyone's on board but then as the voting progresses something changes and there's an excellent speech by William Holden that you have to see gradually building up the tension. It's a very, very fine film that I think needs to be discovered and needs to be discussed a lot more. Not only because obviously for William Holden, but also again for the rest of the cast, the script and the direction. It's a fine, fine example of a 50s melodrama. All right, the second film that I would like to discuss today is none other than Stalag 17, released in 1953 and directed by Billy Wilder. And you will think, well, this is one of the movies that are well known that William Holden is known for. So this is not a movie that probably many people haven't seen. Well, in my opinion, I think that even though this is the movie that as you might know, William Holden earned an Oscar for, I think that it's still one of his lesser known 
films, at least from my experience. And it is again a movie that he made in the 50s. It was the decade that made it for him. He would be doing three or even four pictures a year, which I think it's quite insane. So that's the decade that we'll be focusing on today except for one film. But in this case, Stalag 17, I know again that it's a probably well-known film in some instances but again that I feel that not many people have actually seen and even though it's a Billy Wilder movie I still think that it is one of the movies that gets slightly overlooked and it tells the story of a group of American airmen they're prisoners of war in a German camp during World War II and in this case Billy Wilder adapted a play from Broadway into film and it navigates between comedy and drama in some instances and it is a depiction of different characters within that concentration camp with the leading performance of course of William Holden as Sergeant Sefton and with some very impressive secondary actors or cameos like Otto Preminger and sick Roman as German officers. You see within the film the day-to-day -day life of the prisoners in the camp and there comes to a point when they all realize that there's someone within the barracks that is informing the Germans of the American prisoners movements and the only initially person that gets pointed out. One more word. If I ever run into any of you bums on a street corner just let's pretend we never met before. As a spy is the character of William Holden because he's been trading with the Germans and he has lots of rewards. He has cigarettes and he's been trading things and liquor. And again, he gets singled out because most of the other men are very, very jealous that he gets all this stash of things that he's trading with the German officers and he's singled out. He's appointed straight away guilty as in many instances happen within the society. No presumption of innocence. He's right on the spy in the other prisoner's opinion until he realizes who the real spy is, which is a pretty great scene. And in this case, William Holden plays the, I think, the quintessential role that he would play in the 50s, which is the cynical anti-hero, again, for Billy Wilder. And this is a film that really should receive, in my opinion, more praise, not only for his performance, but for the whole human conflict. And that is why, really, this film is truly amazing. He was again awarded an Oscar in 1954, in a year that he was competing, I think, against Burt Lancaster and Montgomery Clift from From Here to Eternity and Marlon Brando and someone else, I don't remember. And I believe he, as I've read too, that he was given this award probably as a compensation for not being given an Oscar for his part in Sunset Boulevard, which was amazing. But in any case, he plays an outstanding part in here. So it is a movie that, again, even though it's better known that probably the rest of the films that we will discuss today, it's still a film that I think not enough people have watched and that it gets painfully overlooked. Okay, number three. This is another film released in 1953 and it is a Western, in this case, is another type of movie, and it's called Escape from Fort Bravo. And it was directed by John Sturgis, who became famous as a filmmaker for his action-filled war dramas and Westerns like Magnificent Seven, The Great Escape, or I Station Zebra. And in here, William Holden again plays a cynical role, but this time is a lot tougher than Stalag 17, for instance, is a much darker character and it's a Western which has a different dynamic. And in this case, it's like a reverse role from Stalag 17. He is one of the officers in charge of the custody of some war prisoners, in this case, Confederate prisoners, and he supposedly said in Fort Bravo, 
in Arizona and his character again Captain Roper is a very strict and very relentless officer in charge of those Confederate prisoners and to top it all to top to add more tension to all this they're surrounded by Mescalero Apaches in this situation as you might already imagine the Confederate prisons are planning escape led by actor John Forsyth, who was better known for TV roles like most of the actors in this movie, like Richard Anderson and William Damaris. And we also have the female lead role that is played by Eleanor Parker, who plays kind of like an ambiguous character, some sort of femme fatale, but in a Western. And again, this is, in my opinion, a very, very overlooked Western with some very impressive action sequences in which the Apaches in turn they are portrayed as a unorganized military unit almost because they outsmart the American officers and the tension keeps escalating the tension keeps building up and oh boy he is pretty in this picture oh my goodness is that boy pretty <laughs> and another incentive to watch the film if you're not pumped already is the music because the soundtrack of this movie is quite beautiful it is by composer Jeff Alexander who scored many Elvis Presley movies and it has a beautiful beautiful song called soothe my lonely heart that plays out in different instances of the movie and it is one of my favorite Western songs. I am pretty much in favor of Western soundtracks. I believe that some of the most beautiful soundtracks or movie scores come from Westerns, at least in my opinion, and I'm all for Western soundtracks. I absolutely love them, and this is one of my favorites. I cannot recommend this film highly enough. Okay, the fourth film that we're going to cover today is not from the 50s, shock, is from the 70s and it is a disaster movie, a total change of pace. But this is another film, another William Holden film that I think not enough people have watched and it doesn't get enough attention. And this movie is called the Towering Inferno and it's a highly, highly entertaining disaster film as it was the case in the 70s with the success of films like Airport or The Poseidon Adventure. It was a decade for many great disaster movies and this is one of them that I think again doesn't get enough attention. And in this case too, William Holden plays a secondary actor, has nothing to do with a cynical role and yet still beautiful acting in my opinion. The protagonist is Paul Newman who plays a wonderful leading role but it's also an all-star cast because we have Fred Astaire, Jennifer Jones, Robert Wagner, Robert Bong, Faye Dunaway, and even Steve McQueen. So it's a great, outstanding cast. And the whole idea of this movie is that there is this building, a skyscraper that Paul Newman has designed. And William Holden plays the chief and has a son-in-law played by Richard Chamberlain, who's also involved in the project. Like the and what happens is that the day of the inauguration of this building, they realized a fire starts and Paul Newman realizes the whole list of materials that he provided has been totally overlooked, especially by the character played by Richard Chamberlain in favor of getting a bigger cut of the profits, a fire starts and pretty much pff, the whole building that was supposedly going to be a super advanced skyscraper, it turns out to be just like a massive cardboard box. And William Holden, in a way, is one of the responsibles of this situation happening. And it is a movie that, in terms of uh, the genre, in terms of disaster films, 
I think it's a brilliant, brilliant production and it's highly entertaining and as all the movies we've seen so far is a very well made movie and it goes on to show, as I was saying from the beginning, that the range of movies that William Holden participated in is great and of a very good quality. Okay, the last film that we will cover today is called Union Station, released in 1950. And this time the genre is a thriller or a film noir, which in this video, as you can tell, I've tried to include different types of genres so as to prove the versatility of Bill Holden. And again, this time is a different type of movie. It's a film noir, it's a thriller, essentially. And it was released, as I was saying, in 1950, which was a very big year for William Holden because that was the year that he released Sunset Boulevard, which was a huge, huge success for him in propelling his career into proper stardom. And it was his second pairing with Nancy Olsen, aside from Sunset Boulevard. And in that year too, he would release Born Yesterday and a fourth film called Father is a Bachelor. And again, as I was saying, this is the second time out of four in which he will play against or with Nancy Olsen. He would play in two more films, two war dramas called Force of Arms and Submarine Command. And they had great chemistry together. And in fact, perhaps this is not a very common opinion to me, Nancy Olsen was William Holden's best female acting partner. I really love their chemistry. I know that he had superb chemistry with other actresses. I know I love Audrey Hepburn. I think she was fantastic in Sabrina. But I think that out of all of them, with Nancy Olsen, this, there was this special dynamic going on in which they were pick on each other. He would play the cynical role. She would be the unimpressed and smart and wonderful women who won't be fooled about his tough act. And I again, I think that out of all the female leads he played with, Nancy Olsen was the best. That is my opinion. I know it might be an unpopular one, but that is my opinion. I absolutely love all their films together. And I also found a video from the Film Noir Foundation here on YouTube in which she's interviewed many, 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 many years later and she tells about her special relationship and her friendship with Bill Holden and it's absolutely heartwarming. Before I watched this interview, I already had that opinion uh, that they were great together and after hearing what she says, even more so. So again, coming back to the, to the movie, to Union Station, this is as I was saying in the beginning, a film noir or a thriller. It takes place supposedly in Chicago's Union Station. And I say supposedly because it was not filmed in the actual Union Station. And in this case, William Holden plays the chief of the police at Union Station. And Nancy Olsen is a passenger of one of the trains that arrives that becomes quite suspicious of two men that she thinks that they have kidnapped the daughter of the man that she works for as a secretary and she reports her suspicion and he is again playing another kind of cynical role and he's quite dubious at first but right away it becomes clear that she is right that something has happened that the daughter has been kidnapped and then everything turns into a race against the clock in terms of finding who these men are and trying to save the girl's life. And in all this situation, there's still another character who's played by Barry Fitzgerald, the great secondary actor Barry Fitzgerald, who's also a member of the police. And in terms of the people who play the villains, we have two newcomers at the time who were Lyle Bedger and a great actress that I think gets also overlooked in many instances who was John Sterling. And it is yet another case of another lesser known film, the very well crafted movie, very well acted, directed by Rudolf Matei. And it feels too very 
modern, uh, the way it is constructed and shot in many instances. And it feels that it could have been shot in the 90s in terms of how the action scenes, especially the last part of the film, develops. And it is one of those movies that I hope that they never discover so that they can do a remake and ruin it forever. But this movie, Union Station, is again another very fine example of minor films that Holden played in and that are absolute gems. How come no one has discovered Union Station yet? So that's all for today. That is all for our five William Holden films that you probably haven't seen yet. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. This is all to celebrate the anniversary of William Holden, born April 17th, 1918. He was, again, a fantastic actor. I hope that if he's not a favorite of yours yet, after this video and after you watch some of his films, he becomes one of your absolute favorites. He certainly is one of mine. And I can't stress enough the fact that I think he has an impressive filmography and he was terrific and that was the whole purpose again of this video of discovering or rediscovering some of his films. I will leave a link down below in the description box of some other films that you can find available on YouTube and that you can start watching today. No pressure. and. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this kind of videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Take care, stay safe, and see you all in my next video. Bye.